candidate for U.S. Senate is trying something different to win support in the Democratic primary. Today, Andy Garcia is launching what she calls a protest walk across Texas. She plans to walk 420 miles before Election Day. The journey comes after a January poll of likely voters done by the University of Texas at Tyler showed Garcia tied for second place. That surprised a lot of people, even Garcia herself. Our Robert Hadlock spoke with her to learn more about her ideas driving her campaign. We're joined now by Annie Garcia. She's a Democrat running for U.S. Senate here in Texas. Ms. Garcia, welcome. Thanks for coming in. Thank you so much for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Glad you're here. Tell us a little bit about yourself and why you decided to run for Senate. Well, um, since I was a late filer in the campaign, I like to lay the groundwork a little bit. I grew up just on the road in Georgetown, Texas, uh, where my mother, actually, Mary Ellen Kirsch, was the mayor for a couple of years in the early 2000s. I attended Rice University and then came back to Austin to get my law degree from UT Law. I am a lawyer, a small business owner, and I started a nonprofit organization. You put uh, quality health care for all at the top of your list of priorities for your campaign. How would your plan differ from the others who are running? Well, so I have a very unique experience. Um, in 2014, my daughter, who was six weeks old, just kind of flopped in my mm -hmm. husband's arms. And I rushed her into the emergency room to learn at that point that she had an undiagnosed heart defect. And unbeknownst to us, for the first six weeks of her life, she had been slowly suffocating to death. Mm -hmm. um, as a result of this, she had suffered brain damage and she was immediately admitted to um, the ICU. We did not have insurance. So for 12 weeks, she was in the ICU and ultimately she underwent two open heart surgeries, um, you know, dozens of medications, procedures, but she made it at a cost of one and a half million dollars. My baby lived. Now, this should have wiped us out financially, but she was lucky because she was born in Spain and we didn't need insurance. And so all of the issues that come with having a medically fragile child um, did not happen to us. And w because of that, I was able to start a nonprofit organization. So what I want is a model that looks like Spain, uh, universal health coverage. And I really resist the idea that it has to be, you know, within the model of Medicare for all. We need to create a system where we don't have co-insurance, co-pays, um, out-of-network costs, um, uh, all of the different ways in which, in which people are essentially fleeced when they go into the hospital. Let's talk about uh, restrictions on gun owners. You proposed that, some new ones uh, re for reducing gun violence, of course. Tell us about your ideas. So um, I think this comes from my experience having lived abroad. We in the United States are such an outlier, statistically speaking. We have 40,000 roughly 40,000 deaths do at the end of a barrel every single year in our country. In comparison, we have more deaths in a week in our country than most industrialized countries experience an entire year, an entire year. And so we need to go beyond the, the talking points of uh, background checks and close the gun show loopholes and red flag laws. We need to get creative and we need to get clever. So I wanna see every gun owner um, required to carry li gun liability insurance. We require it for our cars. This is what insurance companies do. They assess risk. So instead of externalizing the financial costs of this gun violence, let's start putting it back where it belongs, which is gun owners. Another divisive issue here in Texas, uh, immigration policy. Many people agree it's a broken system right now. How would you approach it uh, as far as solutions go? So this is a very um, personal issue for me as a, an attorney. I, I practice banking and finance law, but I also practice immigration law pro bono. And I've represented um, asylum seekers coming to our country that have fled the most horrific conditions you can imagine, all of whom I was able to get asylum in our country. Um, in addition, my husband is a naturalized U.S. citizen. Uh, we have relatives in Cuba. I help with their papers. I have seen the system firsthand um, as, a, as a wife and as a family member and then also as an attorney. And I tell you, it's broken. It is broken. It does not work for at least 50% of the people that it should. So we need to look at it as, I believe, a two-prong approach. We need to look at the people that are currently in our country that are um, undocumented, and we need to figure out how to get them on a pathway to citizenship. And then we need to look at people that are trying to enter our country who want to come to our country and make sure that we are honoring our American values and our economic needs at the same time. On the day this uh, interview airs, you're going to be Beginning a uh, walk across Texas. Tell us about that. Why are you doing it? 
I want people to see who I am, how I think, how hard I'm gonna work for them. And instead of saying that I'm different, I want to show people that I'm different. So this was the one thing that I could come up with that is completely within my power, putting one foot in front of the other. And it's something that so many people do every year to come to our country. They walk thousands of miles. And so I thought, you know, if there's a will, there's a way, and I want people to see my heart. And so I'm walking 420 miles, uh, 30 miles a day for 14 days, which is about, I think, the max that my husband can solo parent, <laughs> or I feel good about asking him to solo parent. Um, and I want to talk to people. Quite an adventure ahead for you. Yes. Stay safe out there. Thank you. Annie Garcia, Democratic candidate for U.S. Senate here in Texas. Thanks again. Thank you.